hi guys welcome back to my channel we're going into my sister's kitchen to do Belizean Creole bread of course it's you know it has to be our way of doing it right yes you heard me right fresh bread oh guys <laughs> I prefer bake my bread anytime but my sister loves to bake so why do I have to do that I don't have to say thank you hello yeah Anyway, guys, let's go into the kitchen and make some fresh bread. Hmm. How many of you guys have loved to have bread? Fresh bread with melted butter. OMG. And a piece of extra sharp cheese. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's go into the kitchen. And bake. Yes. Okay guys, these are the ingredients for the... My version of the Belize Creole bread. Mm-hmm. And yes, I'm in a different kitchen. I'm in my sister's kitchen today. Ha, ha, ha. All right, guys. Let's start with the east. We're setting the east first, right? Yes. All right. All right, go for it. Okay, so we're going to be putting in two cups of um, coconut milk. You can scald this in the um I Ooh. love it. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that cream. Yeah. Look, it's pouring. Can you see it's pouring? You funny. <laughs> <laughs> so the two oh. cups of um coconut milk is gonna be poured in there. Okay, you guys, I'm sorry. I am once I opened this up and I saw that it was full cream and it says on the can, if only I had read, coconut milk creamy. Ideal for cocktails. We ain't making cocktails. So and I when I shook it, I didn't hear that to let me know that it was actually liquid. So that's why I opened it and I'm like, mm, maybe it's just cold because sometimes when coconut milk gets really cold, yeah. it's it gets solid. Mm -hmm. But I didn't hear this, and I want to hear this. <laughs> so when you buy your coconut milk, make sure that it you can hear that. And you know that it's milk as opposed to full cream. So now we're going to start to measure out for... The two cups of the coconut, coconut milk, milk in here. And I'll heat it up in the microwave because I'm not putting it on the stove to scald it or anything like that. Um, but you can do that if you want to. You can be prim and proper and be whatever you want to do. It's your pot. You do you. Just heat up the milk. And it needs to be heated up to at least um, when it's nice and warm. If you can stick your finger in there and yes. say one, two, three, you're good. Yes. If you stick your finger in there and you go one and ouch, that's too hot. Mm -mm. You're going to kill, you're the gonna kill the yeast. So don't do that. So make sure you can stick everything in, in there and or you can actually read the temperature on it as well if you want to. But when I measure, I usually don't have my thermometer at that point. So I stick my finger in there and go one, two, three, and I'm good. So we're back now and um, I can test for the ouch temperature. My hands are clean. It's washed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so your ouch temperature... See, I can feel it nice and warm like a baby's bath water. Yes. Um, that's exactly where you want it to be because I can go one, two, three. Yep, that's good. If you go one and you feel it's too hot for you, then that's way too hot for the yeast. Mm -hmm. So then you need to let it sit there and cool down a bit and then you try it again and do your ouch temperature. If you can ouch at one, no good no bueno so then you need to now mine can go because i did do my ouch test one i need uh uh what are you gonna do with the ingredients oh i'm gonna um have the ingredients in the description below and the ingredients that i'm gonna put in is for one um set of bread loaf one loaf of bread so if you and if you want to double it, then you can double it. But I'll give you the recipe for one. 
my sister is doubling this recipe. Right. So that's why she has, um, it's what, how many butter? Two? Two, Two tablespoons table of say. butter. So I doubled it to four, four tablespoons table of butter. And um, I'm going to use um, probably about two tablespoons of sugar. But you can substitute the honey um, instead of the sugar. Or you can also just do a poolish if you want to and not put sugar at all, which means you'll put the bread, um, a little bit of uh, flour in there. Uh, and then, ooh, ooh, that's acting. And then I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. And um, as you can see, the butter is already starting to melt a little bit in there. It's gonna cool it down some more. So I'm gonna stick this back into the microwave for about 30 seconds or so and do another ouch test. Um, and then if I can not feel the ouch, then I'll put the yeast in there and then let it sit for 30 minutes. It's really, it's about 15 minutes, but I do mine for 30 minutes or less, depending on when I start seeing bubbles. Because when I start seeing bubbles, then you want to say your yeast is active, you're good to go. And then you add in your flour and all that good jazz, or you pour it into your flour, whatever you want to do. In the meantime, while your yeast is proofing, um, you want to go and do your um, dry ingredients. So I'll bring you back in a bit. Okay, so I have done my ouch test. One, two, three. And it's just slightly less than warm, uh, like you would test for a baby's water bath. So now I can put in my yeast and then let it set. And I need to put in um, whatever amount of yeast I'm using. Uh, I'm going to use a little more than. It says two teaspoons. Teaspoon or tablespoon? Teaspoons. All right, just a second. So this is how you test to make sure that your yeast is good. So I'm putting my yeast in there. I put the two teaspoons, I mean the, the so I'm gonna put in for the second half, because remember I'm doubling my recipe. Whole box, mega million. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm doubling my yeast. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna see what just happened. Oh my God. So I'm gonna stir that in. And it will be a little lumpy as it's supposed to be. And it will all fizzle out in a few minutes as you will see when it's um when it's all nice and set. So don't be too concerned. You didn't do anything wrong if it looks like chunky oatmeal. <laughs> I like chunky oatmeal anyways. Um, okay, so at this point, I'm going to set this as is to sit in a nice warm place like my microwave since I just used it you can stir this in as much as you want but just remember the longer you stir it the cooler your milk is getting and the yeast needs the warmth mm -hmm. um, to activate it so I'm gonna stop stirring and yes you should be using a okay there we go. I just don't want to dirty anything else, y'all. I'm not kind of lazy. No comments here. Well, I already washed out everything, and my dishwasher is waiting for all the rest of the dirty stuff. So, rest. I am going to cover this with my shower cap bonnet. Shower cap when it my peeps. So I will put this in the microwave and let it sit for 30 seconds. I'll set the timer in the microwave as well for 15 minutes. You don't want it to overproof, as you can see, nice and warm. Look, look, look. The shower cap is getting well, I call it shower cap, y'all. But anyhow, I am going to put this in the microwave for 15 minutes. Check it after that. If you see bubbles, you're good to go. Okay, so now we're going to measure out 
six cups of flour it actually calls for bread flour I'm doing this upside down as you can tell because this is supposed to be done this way like that so that's three And this is just AP flour, by the way, you guys. Just This is just AP flour. And to make it into bread flour, I'm just going to add a, um, some flax seeds, ground flax seeds. Five. Okay, so this is my six cups of AP flour. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of flax seeds for each um, cup of flour. So... Um, Here is my tablespoon, and I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six. So six tablespoons of um, milled flaxseed. And then my two teaspoons of my two teaspoons of salt and I'm gonna add that in now because my yeast has already proved okay guys don't forget I will be leaving the ingredients and the measurements in the description below and please don't forget to subscribe that's it I missed the other video okay so now I'm going to mix this all up and then I will bring you back in a quick sec when I put the yeast in that's just the yeast lad oh guys look how that yeast cooked up beautiful Mm -mm. oh smell that mm. anyway so I'm gonna stir up my dry ingredients in here get them nice and stirred up properly so as you can see the yeast is very active hello so I'm gonna add this into this pan right now I'm gonna pour it in a little bit at a time so I'm just gonna stir this in like that take that out and I can now do my little doohickey that I like to do because I will get my hand in there. Don't you worry about that. We're coming. Now, there's an interesting spatula. What? <laughs> I never thought I would show that part. This is what it really says. <laughs> okay. You talk about my colors. Mm -mm. All right, so this is going to be a uh, slightly wet dough. So I am going to pour it all in there because I love my dough really nice and moist. It will raise really nicely. So yes, I will be using that again. Let me just add the rest of my stuff in here. And this is going to, like I said, it's going to be a nice, my moist, wet dough. Okay. And I'm just stirring this up gently. My kind of gently. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells so incredibly yes, good. It does. Oh, guys, I love fresh bread. Oh my god. And I'm actually making this for my grandma. Yes. Oh M G she's gonna enjoy this bread. Yes, yes, yes. And she's gonna get this with some fried fish and fresh avocados and some Gruyere cheese. So for all of you grandmas, nonas, abuelitas out there, I'm sure your grandbabies will be really, really happy to do this for you. Oh, you 
she just put you guys out there. Mm. And as you can see, we are good to go here for now. And I'm getting my hands in there with a little bit more flour. Excuse me. Yes, guys, I'm the camera person right now. Enjoying this moment and waiting for fresh bread. All right, so... As you can see, it's still quite sticky, right? What did I do with my flour? Oh, there it is. So I'm just going to put in a little bit at a time. Don't ever put too much flour in your um, mixture, in your dough, because you don't want it to get too stiff and you don't want it to get too um, be too dry either. So I will knead this until it's good and proper. And as you can see, it is still quite sticky, right? You want to help us sister out? Oh, I gotcha. Oh, I could see that. Da, 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 da. Thank Seven. you. I'm trying to do this with one hand, and the other hand have the camera guys. Don't let her sing, start singing that song. Okay, I can honestly tell you, I don't normally do this this way. I put it in the food processor, so the next one will be in the food processor, and I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> you never get to get your hands so dirty in your life again. My sister wanted me to do it the natural way. <laughs> show you how the real bakers do this. <laughs> You're doing it the way the real bakers do it. That's nice. <laughs> the modern real bakers <laughs> trust me your grandbabies are gonna be doing this the modern way <laughs> all right y'all let me just get the flour off my pan here then i'll show you how the real the real ones do <laughs> yes lord let's just do it the way my sister wants me to do it ah she's so quite happy doesn't she <laughs> trill just thrilled <laughs> all right so it's still nice and soft though as you can see here it is still nice and soft so i will keep um just doing this until it comes into one beautiful round ball and then i will put set it to poof for about whenever i feel like it's done poofing Maybe an hour. When it double its size, guys. For you. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that looks so good. Alright. It's still a little soft, though. As you can see here. It's going to poof really nicely. I don't like that. But that's okay. I need, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the same pan. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to let it poof because it is so nice and soft and beautiful. So um, let me just put a little bit of oil in this pan. And I mean a little bit. You're not frying anything. You're just putting a little bit of oil so that you can get it out later. So I am going to turn it upside down first. Rub it in the oil. Pick it up. Put it back in the pan. Rub that again. There we are. So that when it's ready to come out, it will come out really, really nicely. There we are. I will see you in about an hour and a half, okay? You go take a nice little rest and poof along. All right. Thank you, thank you. I'll cover that up and I will bring you back when it's poofed. Okay, so I'll show you guys how the you transferred it to this container. I transferred it to this container because it already had a cover. So here oh is what it looked like. Is. So it has clearly doubled in size Almost triple. from the last time that y'all saw it. So now I am going to um, 
basically just knead it into a log and then put it in the pan that's in front of you there and that is my version of my Belize Creole bread <laughs> all right so let me tell you now it is not the way the Belize Creole bread is formed it is usually formed in a round ball and it literally looks like that it will look like that size for the Belize Creole bread but I like it that way I can't wait for grandma to get it that, that way because <laughs> grandma has never seen Belize Creole bread in that shape so I am quite sure she'll be like this is what so I'm gonna have to educate my grandma and she will probably most likely tell me this is not traditional <laughs> and in that case it will be my version of traditional and she will work it but she gonna eat it anyways because I can honestly tell you my girl gonna work this and when she's done she will most likely ask for more as usual <laughs> so no matter what shape you put it in as long as the bread is the same um, proportions and whatever it may be um, for Belize Creole bread you do you boo whatever you do as long as you try is all that matters so let's get this out of this pan and I will spread I'm not gonna put it on my regular cutting board thank you I'm not gonna put it on my regular cutting board here I'm gonna put my other this is damp so that this won't slip and slide on me okay see it ain't gonna slip and slide I don't do sliding too well so my hands are clean and I'm gonna take it out now cuz I'm supposed to like punch it down but as I move it around it will punch down on its own so I will take it out and look see the bubbles look at that look guys oh, don't you worry about that so I will get it out here okay and I'll move my pan over a little bit the pan will come back to play don't you worry about that we got you so I'm gonna move the whole thing over because I have to lift up the piece underneath to move with me because remember now that's stopping it from sliding and I didn't put any flour on there so I'm just going to literally I'm not going to um, alright she's just showing off because she found her dough cutter huh, better than some people we know <laughs> So I'm just going to cut this in half this way. My kind of half. All right, so I want to hear nothing but nobody saying that wasn't half. It, it's half for me. So I am going to now shape this. Shape this. Okay. Just a little there. Shape it again. That way. Shape it again. This way. And we're not making baguettes, so we're not making fancy. All right, we're not making. I'm gonna say that again. We're not making baguettes because I am Creole making bread. it my way. This is my Creole bread, and I'm gonna now put this in my pan. So as you can see, I am not even going to roll it like they would roll baguette. Oh, but it's absolutely beautiful as is, though. That's you nice. know, exactly. So let's do the other one. You can take this over a little bit. Take this over a little bit. Okay, we can form that in, form that in. And like I said, this is not a baguette. This is my version of my Creole bread. Girl, but I like I said, I can't wait for my grandmother exactly. to see this. <laughs> and I tell her it's Creole bread. She's probably going to ask me who's Creole bread. Just try to tuck that under. It is not a baguette. I, I'm going to say that again. I'm sure. And someone is going to, it looks like I'm banging in. It is not a baguette. So, I'm going to move it back over. This way, I have to grab the piece underneath. So, it can move with me. Bring my pan back. Okay. So, now, I am going to move it. Spread it into my pan. As much as I want. As much as I want to. Like I said, it is my pan. Thank you. And there we go. So now we're going to let this poof a little bit. And I think El Jefe over here is going to poof faster than little Miss Doohickey over here. So I am going to now cover this with a damp towel. Or just a regular towel, actually. I'll just put a regular towel because by now it's not going to stick 
because it already has the oils and stuff on there. It's in your bread cloth. So I'm going to use one of my bread cloth and just put it over it just so that it doesn't dry out. You can use a dump towel if you want to. So like I can literally just take this and just put a little bit of water on the whole thing. Literally just a little bit of water and dump it out and just dump it a little bit. As you can see here now, this is slightly damp. So this is now slightly damp. It is not wet because you can see there's still little dry spots in there. It is not wet, so I will cover my dough with it, make sure it covers the whole thing. And then I will put it in a warm place for it to raise again. And this time I'm gonna let it, I'm not gonna let it go for more than an hour because it will over poof. Mm -hmm. So at the last 30 minutes or the last 15 minutes or so, you wanna turn your oven on and then set your timer on the oven for at least 15 minutes. 15 or 20 minutes. You wanna turn that oven on so that when you take off the cover, it's going straight into the oven. Um, and this way it will be completely poofed at that time. But your oven will be set to 350 degrees and you're gonna bake it at the 350 degrees. We'll bring you back when that's ready. All right, here it goes. Okay, so now I will start the other one in the food processor doing it my way <laughs> as opposed to my sister's. You gotta do it the right way. <laughs> Anywho, so I am going to start with my six cups of AP flour just like I had in the uh, measured out in the pan when I was doing that one. So since we're doing it my way, we're putting it in the food processor. And I'm gonna add in my uh, flax seed to make this into bread flour. So um, I'm putting in, I had six cups of flour in there, so I'm gonna add in six tablespoons of uh, flax, ground flax seeds, or milled flax seeds. That's four, five, six, and then, I'm going to add in two teaspoons of salt. So here is my two teaspoons of salt. One, two teaspoons of salt. Okay. And I'm going to pulse this together so that all of my dry ingredients can mix. And then I will be putting in my yeast, as you can see, it is quite active and also ready to make this into bread dough for me. So let me just move that a bit over. I don't know what will, sorry, I'm not anal. I'm really not. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I just mixed all my dry ingredients together. As you can see, it's mixed in there just about well. So now I'm going to stir up my yeast and then I'm going to pour it in there and it's gonna be poured in a little at a time. So I'm gonna, that's my first pour and I'm gonna cover this. And for the rest of the yeast, it will be poured through the, the dropper here or whatever that thing is called you may correct me for those of you who are okay i'll pour in a little bit more that's the other one third pouring in the other a little bit more I always try to hold back a little bit because you don't want your dough to be too wet and you don't want it to be too dry I 
as you can see it's starting to get a little turning into that dough ball that you're looking for so here goes the last of what it needs to turn into that powerful dough ball i'm gonna pour i shouldn't pour all of this but i will all right so i'm pouring in all of this in and there we are and we're gonna do a few pulses at this time <laughs> all right as you can see it's nice and wet just as we wanted it unlike my sister <laughs> Okay, guys, she was just talking about the first one that she had to do with her hands. I have no idea why she was complaining. All she right. did such a good job. Right. All right, so as you can see, I'll let you see exactly what's in there. See how it's nice and wet? So as you can tell, if you compare it to the first one, we're exactly where we were before, right? So now I'm just literally going to scrape this all out, and I'm going to put it in a floured dough, on a floured... um surface so that we can now knead this into the dough like we did the first one and then put that into the bowl to rest all right so i'm gonna put a little bit of flour on my um oh lord on my board here and then i'm going to just take out the dough out of that out of the food processor oh that's the first braid that's just about ready to come out or check. Maybe I'll just check it first. Just in case. In the mean oops, in the meantime though, let me just get this out of this pan. So now all you gotta do is jiggy it out and it will fall right out like that. There you are. And there is your dough ball. And now you can just go in there and get the rest of it out with your spoon. In the meantime, I'm going to stop right here because I want to go and get that. I don't like when my bread overcook. So I'm going to go check on the other bread and we'll be back in a minute to show you how this turns into a dough ball as my oven is yelling at me. Oh, Lord. Oh, my Lord. So I'm going to turn it around and let it go for about five more minutes. All right. Okay. Oh my god. Okay guys, this is why I really really need a camera person. Look at this. Oh my god, that is awesome. So I'll let it go for five minutes. Tyler. Two. Oh you're peeling it. Okay. Alright, I gotta shut that up because I can't stand when inanimate objects yell at me all right here comes the bread y'all oh my lord that look good it's oh. Oh my God. now i'm gonna test that first before i do anything do anything and please be careful when you handle hot bread okay please be very very careful when you handle hot bread i am used to doing that so i can see here it's done but i like it a little more crispy so me and my infinite wisdom will turn it that way for a few minutes and i'm gonna brown the bottom part because i like it brown there oops so i like this one a little more brown so I will let this go for a little bit more. I like these sides really, really brown. So I'm going to put it in again for five more minutes. And no, it's not going to dry out your bread. Because as you can see here, the bread has already done its business in there. Put it for three minutes on one side and then turn it around in there and put it for another three minutes oh great so i'm just going to knead this into a dough ball as you can see here i'm gonna knead that into a dough ball
that is the perfect perfect dough oh it's the perfect dough it is the perfect dough as you can see it is nice and wet it's not wet it's damp but it's not sticky at all and I'm literally just going to finish rolling this and I'm gonna put it into the pan so that it can raise a little and there is your dough ball All right, so now I'm gonna put it in the greased bowl that we already used earlier. As you can see, there's still a bit of oil left in there, so I'm just gonna literally just get that nice and oiled. And I'm gonna take my dough here, put it in there upside down to oil the top. And we're gonna set that in there. And let that go and raise like his little brother earlier. Is it on there? Oh. There we go. All right. All right, y'all. I'm turning it around. because I like it a little more crispier on the bottom. I like crispy bottoms. I have no comments on that, Lord. Set it for three more minutes and we're good to go. <laughs> I hate, like I said, I cannot stand when inanimate objects yell at me. Hush. <laughs> I can't even get my glove on properly. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I work in a hospital where every time something beeps, you gotta go do something. Here we go. Oh, Mama will be proud of you. All right, now remember what I said: be careful with hot bread. That's what you wanna hear. That's what you want to hear. So now I'm going to take those off of that tray, I mean off the baking pans, and let them sit on the rack for until they're completely cooled down. And then my sister, if in her infinite wisdom, will most likely want to try it, but she's not trying this one. These are for other people. Oh, that's messed up. Go wait for the next one. Aww. Moving on. I need Okay, y'all, so this is the final product of the my version of our Belize Creole bread because I want it that way, like this, because this is my version and I like it that way. So it is nice and crispy. Mm. Sounds like the way the bread's supposed to sound, right? Listen. Look at that. That is beautiful. And these are the, this is the one that I'm giving to my grandma. And I'm quite sure that she will be very, very happy. And I can't wait for her to tear into this with her um, a little bit of fried fish, which is her absolute favorite, some avocado and some Gruyere cheese. Ah. And I'm quite sure all the abuelitas, the nonas out there are going to be so jealous, but your grandbabies will do yours for you, boo. Listen to you go there making sad in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh Lord. Okay guys, wait for the other one now. We have another bread coming. What one, two? Two. Two, bread. two breads. Mm-mm. Alright. So here is the one from the food processor. And it has double, tripled, almost double almost triple in size, really. Mm -hmm. Um so now I'm going to uh, knead this out or roll it out actually into 
Just like you need to be hydrated. Hydrate your dough, please. <laughs> What I'm gonna do with this one now is since I've already done my hydration, I'm literally going to do the whole stretching part of this now. So, can see how this is still dry? Look, it's dry. Very, very dry compared to this end, which is nice and moist. All right. I think I've done enough hydration on this end, but on this end, it still seems very hard. And we don't want that so I'm gonna put a little bit more water on this end because I think this one is okay this end however still needs some this is not a French baguette it only looks like the French baguette technique not a French baguette my peeps okay all right and there we are we're just pinching the edges pinching the edges pinching pin okay so this is the other part of our uh my version of the belize creole bread hello my version i like it in this shape so that's why it's in this shape so this if you fun. change yours to whatever shape you want it to be you can even spell out your initials <laughs> and if you do please feel free to tag my sister on it <laughs> and let her know how you made it yours so this pan is actually a french baguette pan as you can see and it holds four baguettes and again this is not a baguette okay i'm only cooking in a baguette pan because i really 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 like that shape so for those of you who want to experiment like me please do so I'll just be happy that you tried. Okay. And enjoy. Mmm, crazy. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to slightly just cut it a little bit with the lame. Again, deliberately sliced. Deliberately sliced. Just three. You don't really have to. You can slice it whichever way you want to. You do you. I'm just cutting so that I can get some release when this does its final sp oven spring. The air will have some place to go, otherwise it will crack wherever it feels necessary. Now I'm just going to spritz it with a bit of water and then I'll put it right into the oven only because the top of it is a bit dry. Now it goes right into the 350 degree oven. Seventeen to twenty minutes, so I'll set it for eighteen. All right, yo, here goes. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna turn these around and leave them in there for a little bit more, so that they can brown up. And I'm gonna set the oven, the timer, for five more minutes. All right, y'all. I think that's a oh, lot better. Oh, 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 this is a lot see. better for now. I'm gonna check the bottom, check for the doneness. I like that a little browner than that mm -hmm. so uh, knowing me I'm gonna flip them and let them cook that's beautiful and that's uh, oh I just broke that and do that please be careful when you're handling hot bread and if your bread is done it should be able to lift I like my bread crusty 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 so again I'm gonna turn this in because I want that side to be a this lot crust. Though. This one? Yeah. Okay. So, I like my bread a little more crustier than this. So, I'll put it on that side. And then these two will just go a little bit more. Um, and just to remind you, this is the bread that I had to add more water to. 
when I was doing the second um, roll um, because it was dry. So this is why it needed to be hydrated so that it would be able to let the yeast rise, make the bread raise better. Guys, that's how she enjoy her baking. Wow. I do. I enjoy baking because for me it is very elemental. You know, you take basic things like flour, salt, water, yeast if you want to. Or if you're doing sourdough bread, then you just do regular. Everything is just quite elemental. So that's why I like baking. So now I'm going to set my timer for five minutes and just let that go on that side to brown the top a little bit more mm -hmm. bottom <laughs> that's not the bottom of the bread <laughs> all right now you oh yes lord hallelujah now that's what i call really nice crusty real bread mm. Mm -mm. Ooh, la la. My God, guys, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, guys, I need to get my thumbnail out of this. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Beautiful. Now we're going to transfer them to the cooling rack, right? Yes. Okay, so now that the bread is all done and it's on the cooling rack, you want to check before you even take anything else off to make sure that the bread is done. And this is one of what you want to hear. You want to hear that thump. So you check your breads um, to make sure that you can hear. That's what you want to hear when you're testing your breads. <laughs> I'll test them all right. So, of course you would. <laughs> so, you know, you just want to test all of them to make sure that they're all like that. This one has already cracked right there. So that will be the first one we're going to eat, clearly. That's the tester. Bread and cheese, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. We used to have the bread and butter, remember? Yes. Just... Mama used to slice them. Mm -hmm. And melt mm, the butter on it. The butter it's on nice it. and hot. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait for my grandmother to try these bread. I really, really can't wait. Okay, guys, don't forget to subscribe, tap that bell, send a message off my videos, and I will leave all the information, ingredients, measurements in the description below. See you guys in my next video. Guys, okay, so the one bread that had cracked in the back there, so I just split it open a little bit so you can see what the inside oh, looked like. That, guys. And this is what the inside looked like, and as you can see, the crumb on the bread is really, really good. You know you need to wait a little bit to be able to break the bread open, but it was already cracked, so um, we just helped it along the way. Mm, um, right, but as you can that. see, the crumb structure is pretty good. There is no really gigantic holes in there. There is one hole right there, but all the rest of it is pretty good. And again, the crumb structure is pretty good. Mm -mm -mm. And this is the one you had had to do extra moisturizing. Yes. You had to do the water, I had water to it. I had to add a little bit more hydration to this dough uh, when we were doing the second um, shaping because it was too dry and it would not have proofed properly with the second um, raising. So once I saw that, again, the texture, once you're doing, once you've been making bread for a while or even if you're a newbie, if it feels dry to you like dry pasta it's not going to raise so just like you need hydration the bread needs hydration so you give it a little bit of hydration and this is how wonderful it comes out yes all right guys <laughs> otherwise it will dry out if you cut into it really quickly the rest of the bread will dry out really fast because you already are taking out all that lovely steam out all right you guys so i'm gonna use this lamy with the razor blade on it um, in previous videos, I had just sharpened this part of the lamin myself because I don't like using razor blades. But anyhow, here goes because I'm going to do it the correct way so you can do it the right way. Don't sharpen the inner part of this lamy. Um, you can use the razor blades, but like I said, do you. So here goes. Usually you try to go at a 45 degree angle with your blades. So just go on a 
deliberate cut deliberate cut deliberate cut mm. and if you go that's okay you'll be fine it will survive it will actually thank you for doing that mm. 